Here's an example using symmetry. We want to show that the irreducible representation of the bonding orbital in H2 is A1G, but if you look at the character tables, they've uh, changed the notation on us. That's sigma G plus. And the irreducible representation of the antibonding orbital in H2 is A1U, which in the new notation is sigma U plus. All right, let's try to do that. Now remember uh, from a previous uh, lecture that uh, the bonding orbital of H, this is HH, is looks like this. This is bonding. And the antibonding orbital uh, looks something like this. Now it probably didn't look like this, but this is an artist's conception where this is the H, this is the H. And remember for the antibonding orbital, we had regions of different sign. Let's call this the positive region and this the negative region. And this is the antibonding orbital. Well, we have to determine, um, first of all, what the point group is. The point group here is D infinity H. And you know, I sort of cheat. What I do is go to uh, this NIST, the National Institutes of Standards Technology Government site. They have a whole list of molecules, and uh, I just type in what I want to look at. Uh, here's H2. It tells me H2 is D infinity H. It's put out by the government. If you believe the government, I don't know, but uh, presumably this has been checked thoroughly by people at the National Institutes of Standards and Technology. So that's where you know I cheat a lot here. Okay, so um, let's uh, now look at the uh, D infinity H point group. Okay, here it is. There's the D infinity H point group. It has all these operators here. In fact, it has an infinite number of symmetry operators. Why is that? Well, if you look, for example, along this axis, we rotate along this axis, you'll see that we can rotate an infinite number of, uh, or an infinitesimal uh, degrees around this axis and still have the same symmetry. So this is called an uh, C infinity axis. Uh, so an infinitesimal uh, uh, rotation there and depends on the angle phi. So that's that. We also have a sigma v plane. The sigma v plane will define as, uh, so sigma v is uh, contains this axis here. This is the principal rotational axis. Principal axis and the sigma v contains that principal axis and is coming out towards you and into the plane of the, the screen here. All right, that's sigma v. Center inversion, uh, we have the rotation reflection, uh, and then we have this C2, and C2 then will be perpendicular to the principal axis of rotation. This is C2, where now you rotate 180 degrees. If you rotate 180, yeah, the H's are the same place. Okay, so for those, let's write down these uh, uh, operations E. We have the C infinity. We have the sigma V. We have the inversion. We have the S infinity. And then we have the C2 axis. So those are the four, or sorry, six, two, four, six uh, symmetry operations we can do on this molecule. And now we're going to superimpose on the molecule the uh, bonding and antibonding orbital. And we said that if they're uh, real molecular orbitals, then they have to have the symmetry of the molecule. So now let's try to figure out what irreducible representation corresponds to this bonding orbital and to the antibonding orbital. Well, to do that, we uh, do these operations and see if anything changes sign. Well, E, of course, nothing's going to change there. How about C infinity? We're rotating around this axis. Maybe you can see that, say, rotate about an arbitrary angle, say, phi. The uh, picture before and after, nothing changed signs, it's just the same before and after that rotation. That is a 1. How about sigma v? This is this plane coming towards you, containing the uh, C infinity axis. This is C infinity axis. Well, maybe you can see reflections through that plane will give you the same thing. That'll be a 1. Center inversion, there's a center inversion. You take something there, invert it. Yeah, nothing changes there, no sign change. S infinity, well, if you rotate and then reflect through a plane perpendicular to that rotation, 
Oh, yeah, looks like that. Nothing happens there. Same way C2, rotate this 180 degrees. Yeah, nothing happens. So this is all ones. And so we look up the all one thing here. That is the sigma G plus. So indeed, the bonding orbital has irreducible representation, which uh, in the table is given sigma G plus. Garada, not quite sure what the plus means. All right, let's do the same kinds of things here for the antibonding orbital. Here is our principal rotational axis, C infinity. Here's our C2 axis perpendicular to that. And our sigma V plane, recall, is uh, just the plane containing the principal rotation axis, C infinity, and coming out towards you and into the monitor or the screen here. All right, let's do the E. Nothing happens. Now, that's an easy one. How about rotation around the C infinity axis? Well, as you see, nothing changes sign. This H is the same. This uh, H is the same over here. This is the minus part of the orbital. This is the plus. Nothing changes sign as you rotate around there. So that'll be a 1. Let's look at the sigma V. That's in this plane right here. All right. So you reflect through that plane. No change in sign. Everything remains the same. So that's also a 1. Let's look at the inversion. There's the inversion center. Oh, look, the pluses go all over to the minuses, and the minuses, when you invert through that center, go all over to the pluses. So that's characterized, so the character there would be minus 1. S infinity, well, we rotate around this axis and then reflect through a plane perpendicular to that axis. Well, the rotation didn't do anything, kept the plus to the plus and minus to the minus, but when you do that reflection through this plane, Ah, the plus changes sign with the minuses. So that's a minus 1. And finally, let's do the C2 rotation around here, 180 degrees. The plus will go into the minus, and the minus will go into the plus. So that's a minus 1. So we have three 1s and three minus 1s. Three 1s, here we go, 1, 2, three 1s, and then three minus 1s, and that's a sigma u plus. So this is a sigma ungarada plus. So indeed, the bonding is sigma G plus, the antibonding is sigma U plus.